Hi everyone, after the overwhelming response to my Pokemon videos, I thought it would be fun to create some Illustrator tutorials to help other artists figure out how to use vector programs. Please, if you enjoy this, drop a like, drop a follow. You can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, LinkedIn. Today we're going to be drawing with an iPad Pro. This is my iPad. It's a third generation. I think refurbished because it's a little bit cheaper and it works perfectly. I use an Apple Pen here. Then this is my case. It's a unicorn beetle case. It's got a nice little kickstand, which is helpful for drawing on the go. And it's pretty drop proof because I'm clumsy. <laughs> Today we're going to be learning via the Illustrator app right here. And that's what I'm going to be drawing for you today. The app came out in October of 2020, so it's relatively new. Illustrator is a vector program, which means that you're drawing in mathematic equations versus raster images, which are pixel-based. So you can actually take a vector drawing and upscale it as much as you want, and it'll still retain that same crispness, which is great, especially if you're doing things for print or stickers or anything, really. Quick note, if you want to fast forward to watch me actually do the art and learn that way, there's a link in the comments so that you can skip forward to that exact part. If you want to know all the little details and what the tools are, stay tuned because that's what I'm going to go over first. Okay, so something I really like about Illustrator and any real vector program is that you have your canvas, but you can also draw outside of your canvas. Look at the space that you have to draw. Like, what? You can go absolutely nuts and just draw wherever, whatever. That's what makes it fun. I'm just gonna start with the tools that I use to draw. So if you come over here, this is that pencil tool that I've used in a lot of my videos. So if I select this pencil tool, this is my fill color right now. I could make this an outline color by switching these arrows. So you have your fill up here and your outline right here. Um, I'm just gonna focus on fills for today, but I'll show you an example of the outline. So now that I have the pencil tool, I can draw a circle. And as soon as I get to that, or close enough to that original spot, it's actually gonna connect it for me, which is nice. If you hold down this little arrow here, you'll see the other, uh, the other drawing tool, this is the, what we would call the blob brush tool. And this, these are also in the full Illustrator version on your PC as well, or PC, Apple, whatever computer you use. It's the full computer version. Um, they give you a few different brushes in here that you can use. I always go to basic round, okay? And then, make sure this is in a fill right here. I personally like size one. I get enough variance since I'm in a small canvas, but you can go to whatever size you want. Um, let me just show you an example of like size four, okay? Come over here. This is your smoothing tool. Uh, apparently I have it set to one, <laughs> but the higher you get it, the more it's gonna smooth out your lines for you. Did you see that as I'm drawing? It's calculating it and then it smooths it out. So the higher I have that on, it makes it a straight line. But you don't always want the computer to calculate that much. I guess that's why I have it set to all the way to one because I have a pretty fast handle already and I don't want it to, I don't know, to change my art too much. I love drawing in vector, but I also love my own fluid lines. But if you're having problems with jitteriness, I suggest turning up the smoothness and you won't have that. See? Okay, so I'm gonna set mine to one and then you come in here to the brush settings. Move this up a little bit. Uh, I have my roundness all the way up. You can see what happens when you turn it down. It becomes more of a tapered um, angled stroke. My angle's at 90, yeah, leave that alone. My pressure dynamics, I think when you start, it's at 40. 
I put mine all the way up because I want, let's see, I'll show you what happens when it's at 22. I have size four line. There's not much of a pressure difference when you press down. It gets a little bit thicker, but if I have the pressure set to 100%, I have a full, beautiful variation. And that's what I want. That's what helps me create these beautiful lines here. Now, see, even just size four is a little bit much for me. That's why I prefer size one or two. Then I get a lot more variance, but controlling my lines. Those are my basic drawing tools. Let's go in, we have an eraser here. So, um, they're still coming out with features in Illustrator, actually. The rotate, if you two finger and turn, this just came out, this feature. And I know it's in their other apps, but it was very exciting to be able to do this finally on the iPad in Illustrator. Um, but the, unfortunately, one of the things that I learned in Procreate was double tapping on the pencil can switch to the eraser tool. Well, not quite in Illustrator yet. They haven't added that. If you double tap in it, it automatically goes to the pen tool right here, which I don't often use yet. Uh, so I've just been having to manually move to the eraser. It was annoying at first, but I'm so used to it now. I don't even care. You have your color wheel here. You have your hex code here, which is nice for web. You have swatches and color book options, which is great for when you're designing for um, printing. Let me show you how that outline is beneficial with the pencil tool. So we have our fill, right? Um, let's write some script. to select each object that I just made and now it's an outline you might notice that I'm dragging using the selection tool and when I drag this little bar comes up here which is nice because you can set the transparency of an object right here comes in handy when you're coloring. I can also change the stroke width. Uh, this changes the stacking order of the layers. So as you can see, if I turn this into outlines, um, actually, let me turn that into fill, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Give this one a fill. Okay, so right now this purple is over the orange. I can change the stacking order so that the purple is now under the orange. Very important later on when you're coloring. Uh, this is just the position. This locks that, so now I can't touch it. And it even tells you this layer is locked here. This one's not, so I can continue editing this one. I can, yep, I can click back to unlock it, which is really nice. Um, this means you can duplicate it. So now I've got two, super easy. And this gets rid of it. Um, if I select both of these, I can use this tool, which merges them together. So now they're, or I, oh, now they're one, or I can unmerge them. And now they're two again. I'm gonna select this segment tool that's gonna help me 
move segments along. So if I, using this tool, you can see all the, the nodes in this vector that I can move around and reshape to help me Uh, to help me mold this object a little bit more. Now if I press this circle here, I can move just one instead of both of them. Because before, right, I'm moving both. But now I select this, and it's just one. So it helps you kind of get a little bit more movement in here. So you notice this, this little bar down here, when I select this, it makes an angle out of that node. If I click on this one, it rounds it out again. And then this one gets rid of it, but still keeps it connected. And this one gets rid of it completely, which leaves me with an open hole. So if I select my pen tool, I can continue to fill this. All right, we've also got the shapes tool here. Let me go ahead and delete these. So I can make a square, hold it down. You got all the other fun shapes. So if you hold down this little circle here, it transforms it uniformly. You've got your text tool, you've got your artboard presets, and you can import things here. Okay, so now let's go to this other side over here. I'm gonna move this back down. You have your um, undo, redo. This is your profile. This is how you export things. So you can quick export as a PNG, or you can export it as Illustrator, PDF, all these other file types. You can even do a Photoshop layered file, which is awesome for some of my clients that don't quite use vectors yet, but they open things in Photoshop, so it works. They have some tutorials and gestures you can set up in here. These are your settings. You can rename your file here, which I will, I don't even know, I don't know what to name this. You could change your units from pixels to inches, centimeters, millimeters, etc. cetera. Um, I don't believe you can change your color mode quite yet. Let's find out. No, not quite yet. Oh, something I do wanna tell you to turn on is palm rejection. Otherwise, drawing with either of your hands is going to leave you with stray marks and that drove me crazy. Uh, I touched on the double tap functions really quick, but as you can see, you can switch it from your color picker, uh, deselect an object, switch to the pen tool or zoom, but you can't switch to eraser yet. Come on, Adobe, give me the eraser. Um, a few more shortcuts in here. But in general, my toolbar is on the left, my color scheme is light, you could change it to dark if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep it on light. I always have scale strokes and effects on, so that means when you are scaling things, all of the strokes that you have are going to scale with it. So it's not going to remain a one point stroke, it's going to scale up to two or three based on how big you make it, which is very useful especially if you're setting files out and have to resize, because if that doesn't scale with the image, you're gonna have this one point tiny line on things that you made huge. So make sure you have this selected. Um, and yes, so view mode, preview or outlines. Outlines help you see, here I can do a little. So this is the outline of an object. If I switch back to preview, you could see that it has um, an actual outline and a fill, but on the outlines, you just see the vector object as it's stacked together. So it kind of gives you a general view of all the items that you have in here versus the preview. So you could see what's, uh, if something's hiding underneath something, it's useful. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to preview. 
Um, you'll notice something a little different when you're working in vectors that almost every object is sort of on its own layer. So I have a circle here and I'm gonna create the purple triangle. And these shapes are independent of each other. So I can move this behind here. Um, separate from the layers, we have our properties, which I don't have anything in here now, but if I drew a circle, you can see now my properties, I can transform it. I can lock the width and height if I wanna transform it. I can rotate it. I can also use this right here to rotate it, which is nice. Um, fill and stroke is also over here. So we got it in two spots, right here, right here, and right here. I can lower the opacity. I could switch it to multiply, screen, overlay, etc. And I can add my own stroke down here too. You can add strokes in many places. And, okay. You can add strokes in many spots. Um, you could turn a grid on if you wanted to over here. This is the shapes, combining shapes right here, which I feel like is a whole thing on its own. We'll get to that. You can cut and paste objects in here. This is your aligning. More object effects here, grouping them. Here's your text effects. Your different paths that also came on that drop down earlier. And this is a really cool radial thing that I haven't played much with, but we're gonna fast forward and draw uh, one of my favorite little blue kitten characters that I've created. And uh, this is how I learn through watching other people create. And if that's how you learn, great, let's do it. A lot of artists, including me, will mirror their artwork to make sure that everything is looking okay facing the other direction. Something looks weird, you usually mirror it to see what is off and what you need to fix. So if you come over here, this will help you align it to different parts of the artboard, but we're going to go into the flip over here, that's your mirror tool. So I can flip it both ways. Make it go all over. But that's a quick tool. Just so you know how to mirror your artwork. That was pretty important for me. Okay, I think we're ready. So I got my sketch right. I'm gonna go into my layers. I got everything selected. All I had to do was click. I'm gonna turn the opacity down. And actually, I like to set it to multiply. You don't have to, you can. I'm gonna make a new layer, and I'm gonna move that new layer. It'll probably help if I name these layers, but you get it, it's the sketch layer. I double click. Sketch layer's above my new layer. It's locked, it's set to multiply. I'm gonna to change to my pencil tool. Make my fill 
whatever color your character is. So mine is blue. It's my favorite color. That's fine. Uh, so I know based on just animating and creating vectors in the past that I'm going to actually start with the back objects just so I don't have to move things around. It doesn't matter because you can move these around later. So just have freedom when you're drawing. But for instance, I know these ears are going to be behind his head and I'm probably not going to draw them all together because I want the gradients to fill in differently. So I'm going to draw her ears first. Close that shape up. Close that shape up. Then I'm going to draw her head. Oh my gosh. Okay. See, even with palm rejection on. Okay. I'm going to adjust the nodes a little bit. So I guess this is what you would call cleaning up your vectors. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. But it helps me control my lines a lot more when I do this. I'm determining which ones I need based on how they're reacting to the line. Like for instance, do I really need this one? Because these are probably going to create a nice curve by themselves. And if I get rid of it, it really didn't change anything. But now I have more control over here. I probably don't need these two. I could probably just have one in the middle, but I'm going to leave it for now. Um, the reason I didn't do this tough of hair with the rest of this is because I'm probably going to have a different gradient attached to this one and you'll see what I mean later but I'm just gonna quickly do that one on its own We work for our purposes. <gasps> okay, 
and um, uh, the app just quit on me. So not without bugs. Let's try that again. Oh my god. <laughs> It's okay, it happens. Look, see, it saved everything automatically. That's the best. Like, I'm not even mad. You know, you have such a high um, functioning program that they've created an app against. So there there are bugs, but just to be able to do this on an iPad Pro is actually pretty incredible. So, okay. so we're gonna draw. Right? This is what I want my eye to be. I'm not gonna actually do the black part two. So I want these inside that white portion. I'm gonna go to my layers and see, remember this little circle here? I'll move it over here just so you can see it more. If I select this, I could select multiple items at once. So I'm gonna create a clipping mask out of this white area portion, right? I'm gonna duplicate it, which it did it in here. I'm gonna drag it to the top because this is now going to be my clipping mask for these eyepieces. So if I select the yellow, and this is gonna allow me to select multiple objects, I'm gonna select the yellow and the white. I'm gonna come over here, make a clipping mask. And now that is in that white portion only. So I have this clip group right here. I can now drag this black object in here and it is clipped with the rest of it. And this eyelash, I'm gonna bring all the way up and now I've got my cute little eye. And I could have made these shapes with the circle tool as well if I wanted an exact circle, but I find that using exact shapes gives my characters less life. I don't know, I like... Not everything is a perfect circle. So I like to make them my own. There we go, we got one eye. So now we can do the same thing on the other eye. So if you select a previous shape, it's going to load that color in here so that you can continue drawing with that color. Lock that. Draw my other eye over here. Select black. Go gonna duplicate this object, maybe. There we go. Move it all the way up. Select these two. Create a clipping mask and move this guy in there as well. Ta-da! Oh. Move that eyelash all the way up. And we've got our eyes, yay! So I'm going, I wanna make this a little larger but I'm gonna scale it proportionally. So I'm gonna select here and scale a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the rest of these shapes and you can catch up once I'm done with that. And we'll go into a little bit of shading, just a little touch of shading.
So now we're gonna work with gradients to add some simple shading to this. So it's not exactly gonna be cell shading, but you'll see how gradients just give this much more of a dynamic popping off because there's some shapes in here that you can't tell are in front of others, like this little tuft here, tuft of hair. Um, until I add a gradient, you're not going to see that this is in front of the head here. Same thing with the, this little tuft of fur. So, um, I'm going to keep my sketch on just so that you're clear of where the layers fall, that we know that this is in front. Okay, so going into gradients first, I'm going to select my shape, select the color, select gradient, and I'm going to select the linear, oops, sorry. I'm going to select the Linear Gradient Tool. So you'll see it picked a color for me. I'm not sure what the, um, if this is a previous color I used or what kind of, uh, the reason it picks these colors, but I actually tend to like the colors that it picks. Like that's a pretty little gradient here. So I'm going to do that on both sides. As you can see, it automatically picked this gradient for this ear. And now I can adjust it to where I like. And it's just a nice little hint of extra color. And I'm gonna do that with the blue shape too. Go to gradient, click linear. And as you can see, it chose a different color. <laughs> I don't know how or why, but I absolutely love it. And I tend to just go with the colors that it chooses for me, unless they're totally horrible. See, look at that. I'm gonna choose the body, do the same thing. I will up these, date these tutorials as I figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> Be like, oh, it does this because of that. So if you know, drop me a comment. I love it. I'm gonna do both ears in individually as well. Since I made these their own objects, you'll notice they're in the back. Just like I was saying, the gradients are gonna set that apart, so I didn't want it as part of the head. Because now I can have different shading effects. Ooh. So now, this little tuft of hair in the front, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same gradient. Oh look, it's not in the front, let's move it. Actually, I'll use this to move it. Now it's in the front, that was easy. All right, I don't actually want this to go to this dark blue because this is the lightest part of my face. So I'm gonna change the gradient so that this color, which is the basic fur color, is gonna be down here. And this color I'm gonna change to maybe a little green. Do yellow, so we'll see what yellow does. It's not so bad. So it's got some highlights, but now you can identify the tuft from the rest of the hair, and it looks like if I turn the sketch layer off, you kind of see how I'm layering things. Cutie patootie leave that sketch layer off for now since we kind of figure out where we're going here now white it just created black so I never like to use black as my shading color I'm gonna switch this to a pretty little purple and you'll notice there's a little half line here so you can adjust how far the gradient goes you can make it just down here Now this tuft is probably gonna have the same gradient. Oh, okay, so it's it's gonna automatically go to this black color as the gradient. If you wanna use the same color, what I've been doing is I'll select the gradient. I will make a swatch out of it right here. So I will go add swatch, and now I have that gradient to choose from. So if I choose this right here, okay, this is a slight, I, I don't know if they're gonna fix, fix this in the future, but Applying these just applies it to one node of the gradient. I'm calling these nodes. To one shade of the gradient. So it doesn't quite work when I choose a gradient color. So what I've been doing is I go into solid color, fill it with the solid color, fill it with the gradient. Now I can select this gradient.
Mm, probably gonna, yeah, that's a little better. Now this fur kind of blends into that. What you can also do with gradients, which is really cool. So let's say, mm, it probably won't work on this one, but let's say instead of filling this with a gradient so that it disappeared, I just wanted to make it white. Right, so now this is a whole white gradient. I'm gonna make this a lower opacity so that it blends into nothing. And as you can see, it kind of worked up here too, but if I adjust it down here, same outcome. So sometimes I'll work with opacity, sometimes I'll work with color, but really I get a good enough effect with color by itself. So I can go ahead and select any of my white areas and apply that gradient. Okay, oh, where did my little circle go? It's gone. Okay, let me draw that real quick. Okay, this is locked, I'm gonna unlock it. Choose my yellow. Let's see what gradient it gives me. Green, eh, not my bag, let's change it. There we go, that looks nice. I'm gonna add that swatch here so that I can color this one with the same one. All right, I like to add some color to my pupils too, so they're not completely black. Okay, so it automatically filled it in with white, but I want it mostly black and I'm going to use a purple or a blue, probably a blue for this one. Yeah, Since, uh, yeah, I'll use blue. You'll notice I could change the transparency here too of each color if I wanted to. So that's pretty helpful. Oh, like, what? how does it choose these colors? I just don't understand. Sometimes it's awesome. Sometimes I just, why? seems to be a theme though with pink it chooses yellow yellow it chooses green all right so here's our kitty so far not too shabby So apart from here, what I'll normally do is I'll create a few clipping masks like we did with the eyes and I'll add shading here. So um, I'm probably not gonna go into detail on this. I'm gonna wait for another video, but I just wanna give you a little example. I have a gradient actually selected right now, so this'll be fun to see, just to kind of show you. I would add some shading here, maybe right there. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this. All the way down here, I'm gonna drag it up. Now I'm gonna select both these objects, create a clipping mask, and now I'm gonna change this gradient. You can see here. I'm gonna make this the main color. And oops, oh, I unclicked it. Okay. I actually tend to, when I'm doing shading, I tend to blend it, uh, blend it into reds. So 
So I tend to blend these into reds as gradients because it just, I don't know, it's so pretty. Drag it off a little bit. And I might even lower the opacity of this one just so that it blends in like 50%. Although, see this little tuft? I'm gonna, the shade is on top of that. So I'm actually gonna drag the shade down. Eventually, there we go. Probably adjust these nodes because it's not quite where I like it. So if you continue to add shading, you add a whole nother dynamic to your character. And because it's in vector, I can zoom in as far as I want to and it just looks beautiful. It's gorgeous and I can zoom out until she's little teeny tiny. And I have all this artboard to continue drawing in. I love it. And just a quick tip, if you wanna resize your artboard, you can actually, you can rename it by double clicking that. I believe you can go into your artboard here. Yep, you click right here. You can resize it right here and it'll tell you on the side here what width you're choosing. So that is pretty awesome. And it, it counts for exporting things. If you need to export it smaller as a PNG or uh, a larger high res version, you definitely wanna resize your artboard. Um, all right, so I'm gonna end this intro to illustrator here we kind of dove into a lot of the little tips and tricks that i use on every single one of my drawings i love seeing the videos that you all create uh, out of my tips and tricks so i'd love to see your content uh, drop me an email share it on instagram just let's draw together don't forget to drop a like and a follow i'll create a lot more tutorials if i get a good response and thank you for watching